Okay, hello everyone. I hope you're all really excited to hear the latest news about the Light Client. Uh, well, the good news is that it's already uh, in public beta testing stage. We are being, it's being prepared for the official release. If you would like to try it, uh, I will show the necessary links at the end of my presentation. Mm. Yeah, if you haven't tried it yet, the first thing you will notice is that it syncs up really fast. <laughs> um, this is, of course, mainly because it doesn't have to process uh, state transitions, just download and check headers. Processing headers is a lot faster than processing entire blocks. Our current implementation can process up to five to 10,000 headers per second on a good desktop computer. To improve syncing even further, uh, it is possible to start syncing from a trusted checkpoint, which is uh, represented by the root hash of a Merkle tree containing all previous block hashes. It's called a canonical hash tree. This structure also allows to um, access old headers that hasn't been downloaded during initial sync, which uh, could be useful for searching for old logs or accessing all transactions. Currently, there is such a checkpoint hardcoded into, into the client, but in the future, if we can make uh, this, uh, these checkpoints or some equivalent information a part of the consensus, then it will be possible to obtain these checkpoints uh, from the servers in a safe and trustless way. In addition to uh, fast syncing. Another important uh, feature of the Light Client is that uh, it has generally low resource requirements. Since everything can be fetched on demand, the database basically acts like a cache. It can be kept really small. Memory requirements are also significantly lower than with a get full node, mainly because we don't have to process entire states. This aspect uh, of the get implementation can be improved even further. And still, it provides an RPC interface that is compatible with the existing full node interface. It's not perfect yet, but uh, it's, it can already work with Mist. Hopefully, tomorrow you will also see a nice Mist demo using the Light Client by Alex. Mm. Uh, several people have already successfully tested it on smaller devices, too. This picture is from Martin Brooks syncing with an Intel Edison. And this screenshot is from a Raspberry Pi using, running Mist using the Light Client, courtesy of John Garris, who, by the way, also donated a Light server to help the public testing. And like other community members, provided a lot of useful feedback uh, during testing. In addition to basic protocol functionality, uh, another important question is whether all of this can work in a large scale with good performance. The basic client strategy is simple. It always tries to have a few active server connections selected randomly from a suitable peer set. Whenever one of them seems uh, slow or unresponsive, it drops it and looks for another one. Servers take care, take care of themselves uh, by uh, limiting the bandwidth spent, uh, uh, bandwidth of clients, and uh, dro dropping also dropping them if necessary. Mm. They so they, they limit the time and resources spent on on, on serving serving clients. Uh, for limiting client uh, bandwidth, though, we needed some uh, smarter mechanism than simply delaying uh, request replies because that would. Uh, uh, is ruin the user experience of the client, which uh, depends heavily on s uh, quick server responses. This is why we created client-side fault control, which is a simple feedback mechanism that, ca that can tell clients when they can send their uh, next requests so that uh, clients can better distribute their requests among the few server connections they have. Uh, if they send a request too early, they would get uh, immediately disconnected. So they shouldn't do that. But uh, these trick rules have the advantage that uh, requests never get queued up on the server side, and therefore they can be uh, answered immediately. Um, this mechanism can ensure a good distribution of server load uh, 
uh, throughout the entire network, but we also need some market forces to uh, incentivize the uh, running of good servers. In theory, micropayment is the ideal way to uh, to incentivize uh, high quality service and responsible use of resources. But uh, uh, on the other hand, we should, we should also take into consideration that uh, requiring uh, payment for all LES requests would seriously hinder the adoption of the protocol and also limit its usefulness. You couldn't even sync up to make your first payment using a light client then. So another important question is whether it is possible to create a, an ecosystem where both free and paid services have their uh, place and purpose. Fortunately, I believe the answer is yes. With a service like this, uh, demand changes very rapidly while uh, the available server capacity is, changes relatively slowly. So if you want to provide high quality service, you have to have a lot, lot of resource capacity and you usually get a low utilization ratio. Uh, which means, of course, that uh, servers can uh, sell the remaining capacity at a lower priority and a lower price. So basically, our model is that uh, clients are buying priority from the servers. And uh, on the lowest possible priority level, if the servers still have some free capacity, they can basically give it away for free, which, of course, still wouldn't ensure that they actually do this. But uh, we can create a service model, and they will have an actual incentive to do so. Free service is a good indicator of uh, reserve capacities, which uh, are necessary for providing a high quality service that is, actu it is actually worth paying for. So in our model, um, free service can act as an, ad as an advertisement and also as a protection against the uh, scam for clients. So, so the, 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 it can protect them from, for, from paying for and then getting no uh, service in return. So the basic client strategy should be that even if you are willing to pay for services, uh, f if you find a new server through peer discovery first, you always evaluate it for free, collect uh, some statistics about uh, availability and uh, average uh, delays, and uh, then if the statistics are acceptable, then you can start paying for it. I wanted to talk about the new peer discovery protocol we're working on. Unfortunately, there's no time for many details. It's uh, a new feature is an advertisement uh, uh, feature where nodes can advertise their capabilities. They can uh, pick multiple category identifiers or so-called topics and uh, advertise them uh, under, under these categories. And of course, they can also look for nodes who advertise themselves under certain topics. Of course, one of such topics will be light server. Uh, and finally, I would uh, quickly like to talk about uh, one of my future development plans which uh, could uh, greatly enhance the performance and flexi flexi flexibility of the light protocol by allowing clients to uh, run uh, complex operations on the server side. Uh, in theory, basically, a request can provide uh, any information a client needs, but uh, if they want to evaluate something more complex like an, a contract uh, accessor function that accesses a thousand state entries. That would also mean uh, a thousand uh, consecutive LES requests, which would take a very long time. Uh, usually, evaluating complex data structures on server side could be orders of magnitude faster. And uh, I don't only want to evaluate contract, function, uh, contract functions. I would like to create a universal virtual machine that can uh, uh, access anything, anything from the blockchain, including block headers, transactions, uh, receipts, logs, everything, and uh, uh, allow clients to run any code in such a, a virtual machine on server side so that basically they can ask any question about the blockchain that a full node can possibly answer. Of course, if we are running code on the server side, uh, we have to make sure that uh, the clients can somehow know that uh, they are getting the correct answer. S and uh, there are two possible approaches to achieve this. And uh, I would like to 
make both of these options available for clients to choose according to their uh, priorities. One of, such, one of these approaches is uh, that uh, when, a ser when the server runs a, a virtual machine code, it collects all the data it accesses, uh, creates Merkle proofs for all of them, and returns these proofs to the client, so that the client can, uh, with one request and one reply, the client can uh, uh, rerun the entire uh, function and have all the data available. Another approach might be useful when uh, processing larger amounts of data, and it's a, a more generalized off-chain computing uh, approach, very much like what uh, Christoph was talking about yesterday. Basically, it's about uh, servers signing uh, statements saying that I guarantee that running this function uh, with this blockchain as an input uh, returns in this many clock cycles with these results. Uh, the clients can then uh, ask uh, multiple randomly selected servers to answer the same question, evaluate the same function. Hopefully, all of them will return the same, and then the client can believe it. In the unlikely case, when they return different results, of course, at least one of them will be false, and the client should post the statements to a judge contract, which, can, which will then request uh, intermediate uh, states uh, of, of, of this VM execution from the, from the signing parties until it finds the one single instruction that has been executed differently and uh, punish that uh, one which has been lying by taking away a security deposit. Mm, this, the, both of these approaches have their advantages and disadvantages, but uh, whichever one the clients are choosing, uh, this uh, remote virtual machine execution it will basically be the ultimate flexible uh, uh, LES request, which, uh, can minima which can minimize any gap between the capabilities of uh, full and light clients, which I believe will bring us closer to realizing our origi original vision we had with Ethereum. So uh, we are at the end. Thank you for your attention. And if you, as I promised, uh, uh, here are some links. There's a GitHub channel, uh, github.im slash ethereum slash light client. And this is the main forum of the, where you can follow uh, the developments. You can ask questions. Uh, and uh, wh whatever news I have, I always post it there. And uh, there's also a wiki page with, uh, with, with the instructions for, for to, to try the current beta version. So uh, uh, please, uh, please, please uh, stay tuned for much uh, <laughs> development in the near future. Also, uh, a lot of uh, documentation is coming soon because uh, another good news is that uh, now uh, both uh, Parity and C++ wants to implement the Light protocol. So. Of course, we have to uh, improve specifications better because so far I have concentrated mostly on, on code. Okay, thank you.